A very good morning to all. Looking at important headlines from the Hindu newspaper for first May. On the front page, you have progress in UN listing of Azhar, says China. So consultations are underway and decision is likely to take place. So we have seen how China has every time put a technical hold on declaring Masood Azhar as, a, as an international terrorist at UN Security Council 1267 sanctions committee. So this time, prominent uh, permanent members of UN Security Council, that is UK, USA and France, have stepped up pressure post the Pulwama terror attacks uh, as such in India. So we have seen now it, there is progress which China itself admits on the matter. So China has been putting a technical hold clearly in support of Pakistan. Then this is Ministry of Home Affairs raises issue of Rahul's citizenship. So, action is based on a 2015 complaint filed by BJP MP Subramaniam Swami. So, here it says that Mr. Rahul Gandhi as such, uh, whether he is a citizen of India or not. So, it is said that uh, in the company's dissolution, it was mentioned that his citizenship was British. Then below you have ex-Supreme Court staffer walks out of Bobade panel hearing. So, this is regarding the three-member Bobade panel. Uh, which is in-house committee on the sexual harassment case. So, the ex-Supreme Court staffer who has alleged sexual harassment by Chief Justice of India, Ranjan Logoi, actually, uh, is said, is it said she walked out of the panel hearing because uh, it refused her to have a lawyer. But it was not a judicial case going on. It was an in-house inquiry committee proceeding. Then below you have Apex Court Poser to poll panel on complaints against PM Shah. So actually this we will see later. Uh, Election Commission of India has presently been asked because there will be further development on this too. So uh, the Election Commission has been asked why it did not take action against PM and Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Amit Shah as, has, as the complainants have raised this issue. And this is Madras High Court curves Lieutenant Governor rule in Puducherry. So, this is regarding Madras High Court now ruling that Lieutenant Governor of Puducherry, that is Kiran Bedi, the former IPS officer, the first woman IPS officer in the country too. So, she, uh, she cannot interfere with the day-to-day -day administration of the Union Territory because it has an elected government too, it has a chief minister. So, uh, this is the Madras High Court order. Then below you have a Assam deportation figure gives given to Supreme Court doesn't add up. So Bangladesh, this we have already been discussing about the deportation which has to take place to the country of origin of the foreigners who have been declared so by foreigners tribunals in Assam. So they are pleasantly lodged in the detention centers in Assam. So Bangladesh, it is said, has taken back at least 73 people since 2018, according to diplomat. And the deportation figures which have been submitted by the Assam government in the Supreme Court, it says only four Bangladeshi nationals have been deported since 2014. So what has been said by the diplomat and by the Assam government doesn't match. So that is it. Then on page 3 you have Archaeological Survey of India unearths treasure at UP site. So this is 4,000 year old site, burial site in Uttar Pradesh, Sanoli, which has been unearthed. An underground sacred chambers decorated with legged coffins, decorated legged coffins as well as rice and dal in pots and animal bones buried with the bodies. So this is the finder. On page 4 you have Maharashtra Chief Minister writes to poll panel seeking relaxation of model code. So there is drought situation and he requests permission for review and implementation of drought relief programs. So election Commission's permission is sought here. And then here you have now a portal to register e-vehicles. So this is again Maharashtra government which has decided to provide fiscal incentives to owners of first lakh electron, electric vehicles. So it has opened up a web portal where registration of battery operated vehicles would take place. So there would be provided incentives. On page 5 you have Turf battle derails future of train 18. So the production of indigenously built fastest train sets has hit, uh, has been hit by departmental tasso. So this is called train 18. It is under make in India that it has been manufactured by integral coach factory in Chennai. But now 
there is a question of you know it has also been questioned as one day bharat so now the question is which department would be responsible for it so here you can see integral coach factory the world's largest rail coach manufacturing unit has rolled out this uh, train which can run at a maximum speed of 160 km per hour in record time of just 18 months it has manufactured this in 2018 it's a self-propelled train means it does not have a front engine but each coach is propelled so that's a self-propelled train comprising of 16 air conditioned coaches the cost of building it has been about 100 crore rupees which is half the cost of importing such a rig 80 percent of the components are said to be indigenous so it's a prominent make in india initiative but now the question is that which department would be responsible for it its electrical systems have to be given approval a technical approval so there is this research de designs and standards organization which is the standardization organization of indian railways but it is said that the train did not obtain technical approval for its electrical electrical system from rdso but then it is said that the uh, train set directorate of rdso which is a multi-departmental entity created to provide single window clearance for faster production was the one whose approval was obtained so now you know, there is argument by railway officials that a train was built in record time only because the integral coach factory team developed the prototype in anticipation of approval of train set directorate of the RD, of the rds so this is now becoming an issue then on page 7 you have funny is country's strongest april cyclone in 43 years this is indian meteorological department data so unusual formation during the warming of the bay of bengal basin has resulted in cyclone fanny which is posing a threat in orisha and andhra pradesh so gestation of this you know the development of this could lead to it gaining strength so that is the fear then this is India's ASET test in response to growing space threats. So now France has given a statement that outer space is becoming an arena of rivalry between nations and that is why India conducted the ASET test, that is anti-satellite test. On the editorial page, the first editorial is Transparency Road. So this is regarding how India and China should be guided by the Wuhan spirit and not by the differences over Belt and Road Initiative. So, the relations between India and China are essential. Uh, India has uh, consistently opposed Belt and Road Initiative and we have seen how the uh, BCIM corridor, Bangladesh, China, India, Myanmar corridor has now been dropped from the uh, list of infrastructure projects under Belt and Road Initiative. Then this is off the mark. So, this is regarding Telangana is exam fiasco, the inter exam. So, this editorial says that there is a need for a fresh review of all the papers now. Then the lead article in employment oriented economic policy. So this is regarding jobs. So there's a heated debate on jobs presently, employment. And it is said the crucial link between macroeconomic policy and unemployment has not been flagged. So there's a need for generating employment and that can be done through macroeconomic policy. So that is argued in this article. And this is a Washington pipe dream. So this is regarding uh, Iranian oil exports being you know, sanctioned. So it says that this can only harm and cause mayhem in West Asia. Then you can skip the open page. So in continuation of the front page news, this file case we'll discuss when government actually gives a response. We don't need to see intermittent developments that government wants more time and Supreme Court has given more time. So we can just skip such article news articles. And this is this again regarding front page news, which is again frivolous. You can skip that too because Supreme Court has also termed as frivolous plea on Rahul's citizenship. It says that PILs are not meant to target individuals. And then this is uh, again election commission finds no violation in PM speech in Varda. And this is important. Article 239A allows greater powers for Puducherry House. So in continuation with the front page news, Madras High Court curbs Lieutenant Governor's role in administration. So this is further detail on that, which is important. The constitutional articles also are mentioned, like Article 239A imposes several restrictions on the legislature of Delhi. But no such restriction has been imposed explicitly in case of Puducherry under Article 239A. Then on an international page, one important news which is there is in Japan, end of an era as Emperor Akito steps down. 
So this is Emperor Akihito of Japan who formally stepped down. First abdication in 200 years in the world's oldest monarchy. His son Naru, Naruhito uh, you know, prepared to take the throne. And this will be a new imperial era which will be ushered in now. On business page, you have National Stock Exchange fined 1000 crores in co location case. So, this is a very old co location case which we have been discussing for long. So, the servers of uh, stock brokers were co located in National Stock Exchange office premises. So, that resulted in quicker uh, transfer of information and they getting an edge in, in the details regarding the stocks and they had an edge in getting profits also. So CAB looked into this matter and now it has barred the NSC from accessing securities market for six months and uh, action is, uh, it says actions of, of uh, it affected market fairness. The next is NSCL FPIL merger. Supreme Court sets aside government's decision. So the government has decided on amalgamation of over 5,600 crores scam hit National Spot Exchange Limited with Financial Technologies of India Limited. So they are now known as 63 Moons Technologies Limited. But then Supreme Court says this is violation of both the Constitution and the Companies Act. So it mentions how the center's amalgamation order of 2016 violates section 396 of Companies Act and is against Article 14, right to equality of the Constitution. So this compulsory amalgamation of companies by central government order, you know, it's, which it said is in, essential in public interest. But then the judge observed, the bench observed that this was complete non-application of mind by the authority assessing compensation to the rights and interests of the shareholders and creditors of the FTI. So that is then below you have IT department GSTN to sign MOU for sharing data to prevent anomalies. So this is income tax department and goods and services tax network. They'll sign an MOU that will allow the two to match their data regarding company financials so that, uh, you know, it can pin down on any anomalies. And below you have Reliance Communication to begin insolvency process. So what we saw in news yesterday that it has delayed repayment of loans. This is Anil Ambani's Reliance Communication. So it will begin insolvency process so that it can bring in liquidity. So it will sell off its assets. So as a bidder, Geo is tipped to have an edge in this bidding. So Reliance Geo, it belongs to Mukesh Ambani, the elder brother. And on page 14, you have four sector growth at five month high in March. So this is regarding index of industrial production, the eight core sectors in IIP, you should know about them. They are presently at four month high of 4.7%. So there has been sharp increase in cement and steel. Then there's no important news on the last page. So these are the important headlines. For detailed coverage of current affairs, you can visit our website asha.com and download the PDFs too. So PDFs of daily current affairs are available there by the end of the day. Thank you.